right, I'm going to show you how to modify a .scad file, which is an SCAD file. You'll find them on Thingiverse or my website or other collections of 3D printing designs. So let's open up an SCAD file and you'll bring up the open SCAD window. Um, you'll see the code window over here, the render window over here, and the customizer window over here. So first thing, let's minimize this code window because we don't need that, but we will need these icons up here. It'll make it easier later. Um, so then this is the customizer window. If you don't see this customizer window, go into view and you'll see this hide customizer. You want to make sure that that hide customizer is not checked. Okay, so to start, open up a tab and the edit me one shows which parts that you can edit so let's model the entire thing let's do a 3 8 inch socket so there it just popped up so the controls for this window are the scroll button scrolls in and out the left button allows you to rotate it's a little bit difficult to get used to but it's not too bad once you learn how and then the right button allows you to pan left, right, up, and down. Okay, so let's change this socket holder. From Okay, so we did do to 3 8 but you'll notice that this wall thickness is pretty small, and there really aren't going to be that small 3 8 inch sockets. So what you want to do is you want to measure the outside diameter of your socket and change this slider to be the closest number it's maybe a little bit bigger. And so here's an 18 millimeter socket size. Now also, 3 8 inch sockets are usually longer. This model's defaults are for a quarter inch, so you'll need to change the length of the socket. 3 8 are usually somewhere in the 65 millimeter length range. So by changing that number, looks how it changes the length of that cutout. Now there's a couple other things that you can do if you don't want grooves and you want the holes so this pops into the holes and doesn't slide around, you can do that. And then there's these other parameters down here. Now you don't want to touch these parameters, at least in my designs. Um, but let me just back up. I'll usually have a section of the most commonly used parameters to change and then I'll have sections with parameters that you might need to tweak if your design doesn't fit exactly properly, but you really shouldn't have to touch it unless you really want to or know what you're doing. So now that we have the socket holder that we want, we need to divide this one into three different parts to print. Um, not all designs are like this. This one's just a more complex design. So I chose the holder. And what we're going to do is we're going to render the holder, which is this little cube with the hourglass. And you'll see down here it says rendering, and you'll see a bar down there. Let's maximize this. And it'll take a bit. And okay, there it is. There it's rendered. So we want to save this as an STL file. So let's save this as holders and call this the part one, just to make it easy. I want to make the next part, choose pin, you see it goes to pin here instead of the holder, Under that, save that, and we'll just call that, sure, let's call it pin. All right, and then we'll also need the stub, which is what the socket fits onto. So we will render that. We'll save that. We'll just call it stub. And now you'll see we have these three STL files that you can import into Kira or Prusa Slicer or whichever slicer that you use to get files to your 3D printer so that you can print them.